Town Podcast. I'm Jonas. And I'm TNT Dynamite, the explosive one. Let's crack into another one. Hells yeah. TNT. What's up? So, I, I, I never want to talk, like, I'm not trying to make jokes about people dying. You never want to, okay, and we're going to make jokes no, about No, I'm not making dying. jokes at all. This brings up a point. There, <laughs> Okay. I'm not we're, joking about it. Okay. We we'll, are going we'll go to joke from here. I'm just it. prefacing it that I'm not joking about this man's death. And here come the jokes. There's not a joke. I might joke. Uh, okay. So it is more like, hey, the consequences of my actions have, have come to get me. So there was an attorney uh -huh. who fought Florida helmet laws for motorcycles to get them like taken away. Mm. And then he and his wife both died in a motorcycle crash because they weren't wearing helmets. Mm, I heard about this. Yeah, so like I'm not laughing that the guy died, but it's like it's just interesting that like what and what do they call what's that is that what Herman Cain award is on Reddit? Like it's just people like or that yeah. was more like that was more like people who were like anti covid dying yeah. of covid. But like it's like if you if you're a proponent against something and then that thing is what ends up causing your demise like mm -hmm. is i guess that's irony like what uh, yeah that is yeah that's definitely irony um i think like the feeling of like laughing at a person like that is called schadenfreude uh, schadenfreude okay. <laughs> yeah um yeah i was gonna say yeah the herman cain award is people who like are COVID deniers and then they end up dying or one of their family members ends up dying from and people are like ha ha you're an idiot not, not really my thing. No, it's not my thing <laughs> Not either. my thing, but it, that's basically what it is. Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah. There's people constantly on there getting like, you know, like, uh, hey, we're not making fun of the loss of human life here. <laughs> like, people lose all all levels of disassociation when, as soon as you put them on the internet. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. But, yeah, I don't know. Um, As far as as far as far the guy who uh, lost his, his life on a, you know, on a motorcycle, that's, that's very unfortunate. Hopefully, uh... Realizes the error of his ways. Yeah, but I mean, it's like ten thousand spoons when all you need is a knife. You know, <laughs> it's like meeting the man of your dreams and then meeting his beautiful wife. Yeah, I don't know. I've never, uh, I've never been dealt with the the consequences of my actions. <laughs> <laughs> I've never I mean, had to deal with the consequences of my actions. I mean, I think we've actions. all had to deal with the consequences of our actions. <laughs> There's things as, let me just throw out some examples. I'm not calling you out. If you choose to speed, you get caught and get a ticket. If you choose to cheat on your partner, you eventually can get caught. Like those, yeah. are, those are still consequences <laughs> of your actions. If you if you choose to eat bad food all the time, you can get fat. Like you know, there's yeah, like all yeah. these different things. But it's so just interesting to see people that are so adamant against things that can cause yes. death. Yes. Then that be the reason that they end up dying. Like <laughs> I, I'm just like, it's like you're foretelling your own fortune. It's like, it, it, it kind of is that. It's like a, a person that complains about a certain thing or like a person that goes around and has like an ill will towards homosexuals. And then you find out, oh, you like. They're actually a homosexual. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 There was a guy that I knew. <clears throat> that's a different thing. Though. I think he, he, yeah. He, well, yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, that, I'm sure that's like shame based. Right. But, but <laughs> yeah. there was a guy I knew when I was younger. He used to make he used to like say some pretty wild stuff about about gay people turns out he was gay yeah. like and i'm just like bro you I, like i was like i thought you might be borderline have a problem and it turns around like you actually are <laughs> gay like yeah, right? th things like that it's just like it's and there's no i don't know man maybe it's like some self-loathing in there but but to uh i don't know <laughs> I don't know. I've I've never. I don't know. I try not to deny who I am. Well, I yeah. Well, because like, yeah. also like you know you hear about like <clears throat> like like rappers and musicians and stuff that talk about like dying from drugs early or getting shot or whatever. Yeah. Those things come back to get. It's like it's like it's weird how like when you bring that sort of energy in your life or you do something like that, those things tend to happen to you. Like mm. I try not to draw that sort of negative energy. Like this man dedicated his life at one point to getting motorcycle helmet laws taken away to then later uh, years later die in an accident without wearing a helmet yeah. and like it just... seems it seems so i don't understand like why if you're riding a motorcycle why you wouldn't want to wear a helmet anyway i mean i get like you want the freedom right no, like man. but like at the same time like i have and, and i guess i can put a disclaimer i have no interest in motorcycles yeah. at all like yeah. the slightest interest like sure i get why people want to ride them I don't want to have to pay that much attention to what I'm doing. 
hustle. What do you do when you're in the car? I mean, I'm in a... just like daydreaming about bunnies and snuff and snails and shit? Bunnies and snails? I don't know. (laughs) Cupcakes and rainbows. No, dude, but like when I'm driving a car, like, like I pay attention, but like... I feel like on a motorcycle, you need to be like hyper vigilant. Absolutely, because it's not even about like a car. It could be like gravel on the road. It could be it, like there are so many other and like you are not protected at all. No, no. At no. least in a car, you have windows. You have a roof. You ha- you're sitting. Da- I mean, you're in a, like, you know, if someone hits you, you're probably not gonna die. You know, <laughs> like in a motorcycle, if someone hits you, you're dead. If there's gravel there's on the road and you spin out going 70 miles an hour, you're probably dead. Like there's just yeah. somebody cuts you off. You have to swerve. Probably going to get hurt. Like it's just. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'll give you the real Jonas is uh, <clears throat> while you're while we're sitting here discussing it. I'm always trying to be devil's advocate in my right. head. It's your decision whether or not you want to wear a helmet or not. Whether oh, a thousand percent, whether it's the law or not. Same as wearing a seatbelt. Yeah. So I think that people should be allowed to make that decision, even if it may be life threatening, they should be able to make that yeah. decision. Well, here, here's my thing, man, too. I mean, I guess it, it goes, I, I agree a thousand percent. Like if mm-hmm. you don't want to wear a seatbelt, don't wear a seatbelt. You don't, you don't want to wear a helmet, don't wear a helmet. But like, if you wreck and die, that's on you, man. Yeah. So I, I kind of, I, I feel like that politician, even though he did lost his life and I, I'm sure his, him and his family and friends, he went out living his life the way he wanted to live it exactly well it's the same as like people who choose to play sports like you choose to play football you know you can Mm -hmm. blow your knee out you know you could get concussions you know you choose to do that people choose to do stuff all the time that that hurts like all these dudes who who are pro wrestlers they know they're beating the crap out of their body and that eventually it's going to catch up to them but they choose to do it yeah, 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 yeah. You're constantly throwing yourself around. Like anyone that does anything, people make decisions knowing the risk involved. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's all about like your are you what does your risk profile look like? And what are you willing to risk to what you're willing to do? And that goes across all facets of life. Yeah. And then like, there's 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 people who practice pragmatic. So if I see somebody uh uh I had a friend who saw a motorcycle accident when he was working as a paramedic. He owned a motorcycle during the time. After he saw the accident, he said, I am selling my motorcycle and there's no way I will ever drive that thing again. Yeah. That's all it takes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know. Uh, and this was in PA where helmet laws were out the window. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it's interesting how experiences can change your life like that. Because I know someone, too, who was, like, doing something and they had, like, an uh, unfortunate, like, thing happen in their life, like, medically with a family member. And they're like, I'm going to go into the medical field now. And, like, yeah. I was like, really? And they're just like. Yeah, after I saw this thing happen, man, he's like, that's what I want to do. And I'm like, good for you, right? Or whatever. Like, <laughs> you know, or some takes. people, I'm sure there's people in the medical field that they see something one day at work and they're like, I'm done. I can't, I just can't do this anymore. You know, I'm sure it happens, yeah. right? Like, yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, it's, oh, it's yeah. just crazy how you can think your life can be headed one direction and something happens and it completely changes the direction of your life. Like, you just give up your career. There's people who, who, uh, what was I the life altering moment for you? Uh, what was one for you? I don't know, man. I haven't changed my career or anything based on something that happened. Nah. But I know people who like, who have uh, like they went to school forever to become like a teacher. Did it for like two or three years, and then they're like, that ain't for me. You can't think of like a person you met or or a relationship you've gained or lost that changed your life forever. Uh, I mean, probably my ex-wife because I'm in Austin because of her. Okay. That that was life changing. Like as much as like you know oh. things didn't work out, um, like it brought me to Austin, and I freaking love Austin. I guarantee you a thousand percent, I'm happier now than I would have been if I was in Ohio for all those years. Oh. Like if I would have never, God. She, like she didn't drive me out of Ohio, but she wanted to. She was in Austin when we met. She wanted to come back to Austin. Yeah. Told me I would love it. And yeah. I, I was like, eh, I'll at least go check it out. I don't have yeah. any reason not to. If it, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here. And if I would have been in, in Ohio all of that time, yeah. I can't think of anything that would have been anywhere near as joyous as some of the things I've done over I, the last have, five years. I kind of have to agree with you then because I feel like one of the biggest influences on my life was the person that talked me into moving from up north to down south. 
Yeah. And now I'm like, yo, I feel like I can go anywhere. Yeah. It was just somebody, somebody to give me like that little push, the little bit of courage, I guess, you know, the joint courage that you share with that yeah. person, whoever it may be, to get you out of, out of your comfort zone a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had done a couple moves before. I moved to Pittsburgh when I first, gra when I first, graduate, first yeah, graduated for a little bit, just for school. But then I did move to Minnesota for like a year. But no, I hadn't moved like south. I had no reason to come yeah, but you south. Got family in Minnesota. Yeah, like when we I came don't to have Texas, anybody out here. No, like it was just me and her, and we yeah. came to Texas. And now it's this, you know, you basically yourself. I mean, you got me, of course. Right. But yeah. You're still just basically alone. Yeah. Yeah, and it's fine, man. I'm happier now. I'm sure it would have been in Ohio. <laughs> Ohio was whack, dude. Like, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 was whack. I love Ohio, but like, <laughs> it does not have a lot for me there. <laughs> was whack <laughs> anyways <laughs> <laughs> that's all time we have for today's episode go to crazytown.com for jonas <laughs>